Okay, so everyone wants to know the teaser we set out. Ningyo Rinpoche's brain after the retreat, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was, that was good. That was like the cliffhanger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so when he came out of retreat, so for those of you who don't know, Ningyo Rinpoche wandered out of his monastery, uh, I think it was in 2011, and just left with the clothes on his back and almost no money and spent about four and a half years wandering around. He was doing retreats in caves in the Himalayas and part of this time he was down even in India going to pilgrimage sites. Um, and when he came out, when he finished that retreat, all sorts of researchers, mm -hmm. knowing that he had been part of this early research on meditation, were kind of clamoring for his attention to get him to come to their various labs. And he basically decided not to do it because he didn't want to. He felt like he said yes, you know, he'd have to kind of say yes to everyone. And Richie, Richie Davidson at the Center for Healthy Minds was one of the scientists. He's very close, you know, he's actually a student of Rinpoche and um, mm. has been studied with him for many years. And the two are, are, you know, are very close and he has similarly taught Rinpoche science and the way mm. he's been learning meditation from Rinpoche. Um, and partly because of that, but also because Ming Rinpoche had been there, I think three or four times, and they had scans of his brain. Um, Richie basically said, you know, this would be especially important scientifically because we can look at essentially before and after to see if this long intensive period of retreat altered your brain in some way. So he agreed to do that one thing. It's the only research really he's done since this period of retreat. And uh, a, a paper was published um, a case report on a single subject. So this isn't that common. Usually, you know, you have many subjects in these studies, but this was just a single, a single case study. And it was looking at uh, what scientists refer to, neuroscientists refer to as brain age. So there's a, a very complex way to calculate the age-related changes in the brain, essentially. So there's sort of a, a normal, essentially deterioration that happens over time in the brain. And you can, and scientists have studied that extensively, so they know what like the normal range is and what the outliers look like. Before Rinpoche went on retreat, he was already, you know, looking at the sort of the distribution. He was already, you know, on the, on like the side of which was, you know, um, basically rare in terms of like the, the, the slow rate of aging in his brain. After the retreat, he was almost off the chart. Wow. I mean, he was basically on as far as you can go in terms of. Um, just sort of the, this, this calculation of brain age, which essentially was showing that the, relative to the normal person, the rate at which his brain is aging, especially during and after the retreat, was much, much slower mm. than it would typically be. Do they know why? Or do they have any sort of mechanism that they're postulating for this? I mean, no, they don't. I mean, the, the, the complexity of what he did in the sense that he was he wasn't doing just a strict retreat and it'd be hard to map out like exactly what in those four and a half years did it, yeah. you know, maybe it's that he had a four and a half year vacation. <laughs> I don't think so, but it's possible. So, so. Yeah.